Hello and welcome. I'm David Antonucci, local Tahoe historian and co-founder of the Sierra Ski History Museum. Thanks so much for visiting us. Through informational posters, displays, and this brief audio presentation, we hope you will have a fun and educational experience. This smartphone QRC experience is in three parts. Each part has its own code to scan, with each one telling a part of the story from ancient skiing through the 1960 Winter Olympics. All the audio tours will be a brief overview, approximately 15 minutes long, and covering the extensive written materials available in the museum. If you desire even more information, you can obtain it through the three books the museum is designed around. We begin this first audio tour with ancient ski history and will cover the time up to the mid 20th century. As shown on the first informational poster, the origin of skiing cannot be traced back to one specific time or place. It is thought by many that the origin of skiing may be more than 200 centuries old, possibly originating in Russia or China. The oldest ski-related artifacts date to 6100 BC. As shown on the poster, the well-preserved skis were found in a bog near Kaltras, Sweden, and have been dated to 3200 BC. Other, less well-preserved skis were found from this period, as well as numerous drawings as shown on the first informative poster. Our understanding of ski history vastly improved throughout the Middle Ages, where pictures and stories document skiing mainly used for transportation, warfare, and hunting. The historical records are mostly from the Scandinavian countries and Russia. We begin to see how important skiing is to cultures, as deities are created that are related to skiing, and even one geographical region, Scandinavia, is named after the goddess of skiing, Scotty. Although there is some mention of recreational skiing in medieval times, things did not appear to change much over these years until the birth of Sondre Norheim in 1825. As shown on the poster, he was passionate about skiing, the best skier of his day, and an innovator. To this day, he is considered the father of modern skiing. His numerous innovations in skiing, as well as his immigration to the United States, changed how we ski. Here in California, skiing got its start during the 1850s, not as a sport per se, but as a form of transportation over deep snow. Some old timers in the region insisted that the first skis were wooden staves taken from barrels used by a gold miner named Hamilton Ward. Most evidence suggests that Norwegians who arrived here during the gold rush introduced the concept of skiing. Either way, miners soon were traveling over the snow on carved wooden planks, pushing themselves along with one long pole. After an avalanche in 1853 took the life of a lone miner struggling along without skis, their use grew quickly in the high elevation mining communities. After the gold rush, there was an increasing demand for communication between California and the eastern United States, which resulted in the establishment of an overland mail route between San Francisco and Salt Lake City. Nobody was available to deliver the mail. Regional newspapers published accounts of the dangerous difficulties and failed commercial attempts to deliver mail over the mountains during the winter months. There weren't any takers until Snowshoe Thompson decided to answer the call to duty. The word snowshoe was a 19th century term to describe what today we call a snow ski. Air skies or storm, rain or snow, Snowshoe Thompson always delivered. For personal protection, he carried only matches, some beef jerky, crackers and biscuits. No blanket, no gun, no camping gear, no compass. He wore a simple Mackinac jacket, a wide brim hat, and smudged his cheekbones with charcoal to prevent snow blindness. Thompson rarely stopped to rest and sometimes he built a fire for heat, but when a blizzard made that impossible, he danced a jig on a rock to stay warm. He preferred to sleep under projecting rocks using mail sacks for pillows. Thompson preferred to ski at dawn and dusk when the snow was hard, crusted, and very fast. He navigated in the dark using the stars as a compass, and he judged his progress and elevation by observing familiar rock formations along the route. The exploits of Snowshoe Thompson are one of Tahoe's greatest legends, but it is not mythology. 
Thompson rescued many people from certain death during his two decades of skiing over the Sierra. Not only was Snowshoe Thompson a great mail carrier, but he was also involved in the first longboard races in the mining region called the Lost Sierra. The Lost Sierra may have been isolated and buried in snow for half the year, but it was also home to thousands of miners and their families who craved entertainment and exercise. It was only a matter of time before some adventurous souls decided to take their traveling skis and point them down the mountain for a thrill. From that point on, snowshoe mania swept through the northern mountains. Local mining towns sponsored longboard ski teams that would compete with each other for cash prizes that could reach $1,000, paid in silver dollars or bags of gold dust. A great tribute to early California ski racing was that women and sometimes children were included in the competitions. During the Victorian era of the 19th century, American women couldn't vote and were generally disenfranchised socially, politically, and economically. California females, however, could own property and conduct private enterprise. In the Sierra mining camps, women young and old were encouraged to grab their skis and hit the hill. Women skiers really caught the eye of the miners. One man wrote, Nothing on a bright sunshiny morning can be more graceful or beautiful than a fair young lassie gliding sylph-like motions over hills and plains upon her Norwegian snowshoes. Before the Transcontinental Railroad sliced through the region in 1868, there were few winter visitors to this snowbound wilderness. But once the tracks were built, the Truckee region became an accessible winter wonderland. In December 1867, despite stormy weather in the mountains, 700 people jammed aboard 10 Central Pacific passenger cars for a special snowball excursion into the Sierra. The outing was a fundraising benefit for the Sacramento Pioneers Association and the first public train trip ever into the heart of a Sierra snowstorm. In 1892, Charles McGlashan began attracting skaters to Truckee when he built a 450-foot diameter ice rink in front of Truckee's Commercial Row storefronts. Within a year or two, some of the members of the Truckee community had decided that winter sports could be an important component for future economic prosperity. Several of the town's leading citizens formed a private winter carnival company to build and operate an ice palace on Front Street in downtown Truckee. They were convinced that developing and expanding winter tourism could boost revenue with year-round activity. Their pioneering efforts resulted in the construction of the town's first ice palace, which became the cornerstone of the earliest winter carnivals. Truckee was at the vanguard of the development of winter sports in the United States. According to eminent ski historian Morton Lund, the indisputable historical record shows at least this much. The first three ski toes on the American continent were erected in Truckee, California. Notwithstanding claims to the contrary, Hilltop, across the Truckee River and just south of town, was, by any measure, the pioneer site of American toe skiing. By the late 1930s, downhill skiing was the primary sport and the town's old toboggan lift and slide were no longer in use. The success of Truckee's annual winter carnival in the early 20th century helped lead to the increasing popularity of winter sports in California. In the Truckee Lake Tahoe area, ski clubs were formed, jumps were built, and tournaments and meets were held. In the late 1920s, an opportunity to expand into winter sports appeared at North Lake Tahoe. In 1926, the Leonard Steamship Company purchased the Tahoe Tavern Hotel and decided to reopen the facility from December to March. Transportation to the lake was provided by Southern Pacific Railroad, which maintained a track from the main line in Truckee to the hotel in Tahoe City. Before long, the tavern's winter sports program included ice skating, downhill skiing, and exhibition ski jumping. During the winter of 1928, local skiers like Jack Starrett, Carl Bechtel Jr., Joe Henry, and others formed the Lake Tahoe Ski Club to organize more activities and competitive events. It was the beginning of a club that would leave an indelible mark on the sport. The late ski historian Robert Froelich has written, To the present day, the club has more national champions and Olympians than any other ski club in America 
including Christian Krohn and Bob Ormsby. In addition to placing more than 60 members on the U.S. Alpine Ski Team, several of its members, such as Lars and Anders Haugen, Greg Jones, and Jimmy Huga, are in the prestigious U.S. Ski Hall of Fame. After California failed to secure the 1932 Winter Games, the California Chamber of Commerce switched gears and began to embrace winter sports as a viable, economic, and popular commodity. During a three-phase meeting held in San Francisco, the Winter Sports Committee organized the California Ski Association and they anointed Jerry Carpenter as the father of California ski sport. Wendell T. Roby of Auburn, California was the association's first president. Roby was the energetic owner of Auburn Lumber in Auburn, California and the principal founder of the Auburn Ski Club. It was in sunny Auburn, California that the next big stride in Sierra Winter Sports was made when the Auburn Ski Club was organized in 1928 with a mandate to provide warm shelter, cleared slopes, and the first engineered ski jumping hill to be built in California. Right out of the gate, it was apparent that the Auburn Ski Club was going to be something special, a virtual dynamo of energy and accomplishment that would soon propel it to the forefront of ski development in California and the West. Led by Wendell Roby, a no-nonsense businessman with a talent for organization and a passion for the outdoors, the Auburn Ski Club moved forward in leaps and bounds. It's probably safe to say that no other ski club has played such a major role in California in promoting winter sports as the Auburn Ski Club, especially during the 1930s when skiing first captured the country's imagination. In a small booklet titled A Half Century of California Skiing, Wendell Roby described how the club came up with this innovative solution to their number one problem, access to better snow conditions at the higher elevations. The plan, which was implemented with success, involved driving all California legislators up to the snow. Although this ended up in a huge traffic jam the following day, the bill keeping the main Trans Sierra Highway, Highway 40, open all weekend was passed. In 1932, the Auburn Ski Club formed the first unit of the National Ski Patrol west of the Mississippi, and in 1933 they became the first in California to begin competition in alpine racing. When it came to marketing and winter sports, Roby and the Auburn Ski Club leadership kept pushing the limits. In 1934 and 35, they put on ski jumping exhibitions in Berkeley, California, and in 1939 hosted an international jumping competition at San Francisco's Golden Gate International Exposition. When it comes to the earliest concentration of ski facilities and rope tow operations in the Central Sierra region, the Donner Summit area was the leader of the pack. Greater annual snowfall at the higher elevations made for more reliable conditions than Lake Tahoe and Truckee and its close proximity to the Transcontinental Railroad provided dependable winter transportation. By the end of the 1930s, the Donner Summit region boasted one of the most extensive concentrations of rope tows, ski clubs, and ski trails in the United States. By 1939, there were rope tows and mom-and-pop ski operations all along the Highway 40 corridor. The increasing popularity of alpine skiing on the summit would soon be elevated to a new level with the opening of the Sugar Bowl ski area for the 1940 season. California's first true alpine resort, Sugar Bowl, was notably larger than any other summit operations, and its electric chairlift, the first in Sierra, enabled the skier to sit down for a leisurely ride up the ski hill. The chairlift accessed the slopes of 7,943-foot Mount Disney with its challenging ski runs and vertical drop of 1,500 feet. Thank you for experiencing ski history from ancient times to skiing in the mid-20th century. 
The next QRC Ski Museum experience will take you through the early years of Squaw Valley Ski Area leading up to the Olympics and the early years of Alpine Meadows Ski Area.